All right, guys, welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central store processor? We are back in Decon and we are going to hand wash a call storage system tray. So, first things first is we want to take all these instruments out of the container, um, making sure you separate the rigid scope so that it does not get damaged. So, that's the first thing I did. Um, also be familiar with this tray because as you can see, devices are left assembled. You want to disassemble it and inspect those ceramic tips if they're present for any damage. Okay. Um, so take everything apart, open up those stock cocks and then place it into the, uh, rinse sink. You also seen that on the elemental forcep that there was a, um, disposable cautery tip still in place you're going to take that off and you're going to dispose of that properly all right so you're going to rinse everything including the tray and you're going to place that into your soaking slash cleaning sink okay so again this is the manual cleaning process um, you want to rinse everything and as you can see i'm rinsing externally and internally now, I've gotten slack for this internal flushing, um, stating that, oh, this should be done under the surface of the water, but I disagree, okay? We don't rinse under the surface of the water, so um, we're rinsing internally, and I have been seen, and I have been known to use a brush during the rinsing process, just to see that, you know, sometimes when you rinse, there's some dried up soils in there, and those soils don't come off. So I press a brush down there just to see, okay, is there any soils caked up in there? Because if there is, that determines how long I'm going to soak my instrument um, and then how many times I'm going to brush. Now, for these Sisto trays with stopcocks, some of those stopcocks um, come apart and you should routinely be taking them apart. But just a word of caution, if you're taking them apart, be real careful not to lose those small levers and screws. Now, this one here was really difficult to take apart. So I went and I soaked it in some instrument milk um, and it came off pretty easy there. Okay, rinsing those small components and then soaking everything. All right, there's my rigid scope. That's the final rinse there. I'm placing that again to the side because I don't want to damage that. All right, so we are soaking our tray here anywhere from the one to five minutes. Everything rinsed off and it was looking pretty clean. So point of use treatment was done very, very well. But this is a manual cleaning process. And don't get me wrong, some of these trays can go through the washer disinfector. But make sure you confirm that and verify that with your IFU now, this tray is being manually cleaned because although the instrumentation can go through the washer, the scope cannot. So in order to not lose the scope or possibly damage the scope, the whole tray is being hand washed. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a hassle sometimes, but, you know, for the sake of simplicity, just hand wash the whole tray. All right, so hand washing means that you have to put some friction in there after a soak. And hand washing is not just soaking. It is actual brushing and um, wiping. Uh, so I'm using a sponge to wipe um, the outside of the instrument. I'm using lumen brushes to clean the insides of the device. And again, um, upon the first pass, it's looking pretty clean. So I don't have to keep brushing and brushing and brushing. Um, just make sure that I have the correct lumen size brushes. Um, and as I'm brushing and cleaning them, I'm moving over to the final and critical water rinse sink. Okay, so all of my items using a sponge to clean off the external surfaces and then using a small brush to clean the internal brushes using the toothbrush style um, brush to get to those hard to reach crevices there. All right, so brushing there. Okay, this um, elemental uh, forcep actually had two uh, cannulas or two channels. I didn't have the right size brush, so I went, go ahead and found my brush that I needed to clean the internal lumen there because you want to properly clean that, right? All right, so I got that brush there going right down that little lumen brush real quick. It all came out good. Okay, 
using a bigger diameter brush to get into those um, thicker and um, fatter uh, uh, lumens in the cisto tray. Okay, and I'm also brushing onto the side where the stop cock was removed. Okay, and I'm using the brush to hit those areas and I'm also actually using the metal side of the brush because there was some corrosion there. So I want to lightly get that off and it wasn't coming off with the bristle brush. Just be careful you don't damage your instrument, right? Okay. Continue to flush, I mean, uh, brush those internal lumens, that stopcock area. Okay, give that a quick little brush to bring that vigor right back because it's been a while since those stopcocks been taken off. All right, and then all of my very small components being really, really careful not to drop them because my drain screen is actually pretty big and that little bolt can fall right in there. And if it falls down there, you can forget about it. I don't lost a little screw. Okay, so making sure I'm cleaning all those small little components there, allowing the contact time, um, the right temperature, of the water, all that is significant when it comes to the cleaning process, especially the manual cleaning process. Okay, so this is taking some time here, but again, the manual cleaning process is not an easy process. That's why a lot of people hate it, um, but it's necessary for some of the devices. Um, and maybe in the near future, I might be able to contact the manufacturer and see if we can go ahead and put this tray, even with the rigid scope, through the washer because there are several companies that allow their rigid scopes to go through the washer disinfector and i've actually seen facilities do that as well you just have to have the appropriate um holder now those little screws um were pretty stained up so i got some surgery stain here diluting it to a one to seven ratio so that's a 16 ounce little container two ounces of uh, surgery stain, and then fill it up to the 16 ounce mark with some warm water. All right, so here's my final rinse. I am using critical water here to give this a good rinse. You wanna rinse externally and internally for at least a minute, right? So constant flushing, constant uh, spraying in here. Um, getting those instruments out of the container again um, and I'm putting them off to the little platform there that I have lined up with an absorbent liner okay so getting all my little small components there I see another one floater in there uh, rinsing the container off as well because I know you guys have seen when there's residual detergent left on these plastic containers and they go through the um, sterilizer or the low temperature sterilizer they leave this nasty film on there that you really can't get off so it's important to rinse very very well using my air gun here to remove residual water um, and then placing it off to the side okay and I'm gonna dry this as best as possible as I stated before drying is part of the cleaning process and it should be done in decontamination where we have the appropriate ppe to protect us from any aerosols or possible splashes all right so i'm gonna go ahead and drain these small little devices and then rinse it off i'm gonna put everything back together and i'm not gonna organize the tray very very well but i'm gonna place everything back in the tray as dry as possible and then send it through the pass-through window to the assembly side so that they can inspect it properly and put it together properly. All right, so this is the final product here. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves. Keep it 100. Continue educating yourself. Until next time, peace. See that scope side.